the fact that you're here, which is a good sign. I tell coaches around the country that I've made mistakes. I coached. I cut a kid one year who didn't show up for practice. He had to deliver newspapers. And instead of really trying to find out how important it was for him to deliver newspapers, I said, hey, we've got rules. You didn't come. I cut him. Uh, he went to the University of Virginia. His freshman year, he was the ACC freshman of the year. He was one of the best athletes that ever went to the school. So I can always tell you guys and gals, we all make mistakes. But I, I always show this picture. This is a picture of Muggsy Bogue and Sean Bradley. And when I talk to kids at camp, I tell them, chances are every camper here will be somewhere taller than Muggsy, yet shorter than Sh uh, Sean Bradley. That's a pretty good statement, wouldn't you say? At Syracuse, they had 600 kids, and they all kind of chuckled because there was one real small kid, but it was the coach's son, the assistant coach's son, and he was in second grade. He was only this high. But basically, kids will be somewhere taller than Muggsy, shorter than Sean Bradley. I wonder how many coaches told Muggsy, you're too small, you'll never play basketball. I'll bet there are a few, wouldn't you say? Because I remember uh, when I was an eighth grader, I was so small and so skinny. I got cut, and I thought, my gosh, I thought I was a pretty good player. And the coach said, son, you'll never play basketball. You're too small and you're too skinny. And boy, I'll tell you, that, that, that hurt. Recently, I read, and this is good to know as a coach, that for every negative comment you lay on a kid, this is true. It takes 12 positive comments and experiences to undo that. And we're all guilty of it. You know, we use sarcasm. A kid doesn't do something properly, and bang. OK, now let's get to shooting. Shooting is simple. Shooting is simple. We make it very difficult. There are, there are coaches all over the country. And because you're a good shooter doesn't mean you're a great shooting coach. You know, people say to me, well, you don't have the world's record for shooting, do you? I said, no, but I'm 66 years old. I started doing clinics in 1949 with a kid named Rosie Greer. I failed. I couldn't make him a basketball player. <laughs> I tried. You know what his problem was? He didn't want to hurt anybody. He was kind and gentle. Yeah, this is the same guy that was an All-American football player at Penn State and played professional football, was a member of the front four, the fearsome foursome with the Los Angeles Rams and the Giants. He's a big guy. High school basketball, he did not want to hurt anybody. True. But I'm not getting a scholarship. And you're not coming to see, would you like me to shoot 200 in a row, 300 in a row, 400? What's that going to give you? I've been to clinics where they brought people in and the guy stands there on the line and he throws them in all night long and the campers are going, ooh, one, two, and they're counting. I remember Coach Katie had me in for the Pan American Games. And he says, Ernie, I didn't bring you in here to shoot the ball. I, I brought you in here so my kids can shoot the ball. <coughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? I have no ego. I, I'm so dumb that we pay to be franchised. I am the only dumb shot doctor in America. I paid to be trademarked. And they're a shot doc. I went to California with my wife, and we run into a camp. I'm wearing a shirt with a picture of me on it. The shot doctor, right? We go to this camp, and they're featuring the shot doctor. And he sure didn't look like me. <laughs> and my wife got all upset. She said, sue him. Get your lawyer up. I said, where am I going, honey? I'm 66 years old, or whatever. He wants to be a shot doctor. Let him be. I went to Purdue, and some guy said, boy, Hey, that shot doctor that came here, the little high school, Lafayette, it was terrible. He did a terrible job. He said, never use the backboard. Don't do this. I said, well, I have to pay. But now I retired to North Carolina. I love it in North Carolina. Wilmington, North Carolina, right? And the folks have me in to do a clinic. The same day, newspaper, big headline, shot doctor coming to Wilmington. I said, gee, I wonder how they knew I was coming. I opened it up with somebody else calls himself the shot doctor. 
Now I don't dare send the article to my wife because she's in New Jersey teaching. She's got one more year to go to get her 25 years in. So I, I figured I'd, I'd go retire. No one will know who the shot doctor is. I brought Anthony Mason down from the New York Knicks. He stayed with me. Now Mrs. Stark, John Stark's mother wants him to come down and stay with me. Anthony's shooting 72%. That doesn't sound like a lot, but if you saw him play last year, he was under 50% in the playoffs and he killed the Knicks. And he was shooting from over here and he like rigor mortis set in. And, well, anyway, make a long story short, he likes my drill one so much that he's shooting one-handed now. So I'm gonna show you some of the drills. And Tom and Doug have agreed to help me when I call them. But let me just share this with you. The most, the most important word, the most important word that you can use in basketball, the most, is, I don't care if you're Bobby Knight or if you're Dean Smith, if you are coaching basketball, you know the word I'm going to say? One word, the most important word in basketball. Without this, you can't play the game. Anybody want to guess? Stance. Stance. I tell guys, gals, no stance, no chance. That's that simple. Can you rebound without a stance? Can you defend without a stance? Can you shoot the ball without a stance? And I tell kids, if you don't stick your butt out, it's going to be right here, right? We're like you folks are all sitting down watching. I said, your butt's either going to be down watching or stick it out so you can play the game. And I mean that sincerely. I tell kids, the letters CBS, you see them on TV, the Columbia Broadcasting System. I said, CBS stands for something completely different in my language. C is chance. B is balance, and S is stance. Think about it. If you're going to take a chance and shoot the ball or pass the ball, have balance and have stance. Is that bad? This is, this is one of my biggest peeves. Tom, come up. Tom's guarding me now. Let's go sideways so everybody can see. And I'm not picking on girls because boys do it just as much. He's harassing me. Right? And I, I, coaches don't get mad at me, but somehow coaches like to move the ball with the ball up over the head. They love that. And I love to guard guys like that. What can I do with the ball up here? I can do one thing. What can I do? Pass the ball. I, I, I'm, no, I'm not a true, but hey, keep it moving. We run the motion. And I'll talk about that later, too. Anyway, now, how close can Tom come to me? How close? Closer. I'm six o'clock, now I have no stance. And if I'm dumb enough to move my jab foot back here, he, now he puts me in jail. Now I'm really cooked. So the first thing that we do with kids, we tell them, we're gonna make you stronger. That's great. Any, anybody here doesn't wanna be stronger? No, okay. If I hold the ball like this and Tom smacks it, it's gone. And this is true, I, he's not gonna hit any harder. I'm gonna do one thing, watch me. I'm going to cock my right wrist. I'm not squeezing the ball. I'm holding it very loose. All I did was cock my wrist. Did you know, physiologically speaking, you are stronger with your wrist cocked? Did you know that? This, no strength. I, I hate the wet noodle, the spider, I call it. What can I do with my fingers down? What am I going to do? You play basketball with your fingers up and your toes down. Your toes are always in the floor. So the next thing I do with the defensive player, I let him know that he has no right to get in my face. Now, if Tom's going to get way back and he's going to let me shoot the ball, I'm going I'm to be pretty good. I'm, you know, don't bother me, Tom. Don't get too close. And for kids to go out and just stand there and just shoot the ball, I mean, that's not the game. I swear to you, I'm 66 years old. If you don't guard me and just leave me alone, you can play your zone if you want. That might be better. I can shoot the ball. But if you guard me and make me work and make me run, <laughs> I'll get another heart attack. Honestly. 
So once a kid gets loose and gets a nice rhythm, nice stroke, then make him work to shoot the ball the way you shoot it in a game. So what we do, I tell Tom, I'm going to put my chin right in your chest. I'm going to cock my wrist. And I'm, this is my jab foot. If you're a righty, your right foot jabs. If you're a lefty, your left foot jabs. And there's some coach, uh, uh, Wooden, John Wooden, I think his name is. He teaches that, or he still teaches that. You, you've heard of him, right? Yeah, I spent a lot of time in California with UCLA. Not this year, last year, when they won the NCAs. I don't tell anybody I spent any time this year, because I didn't. But anyway, I sat there and I listened to that man tell me, you can't go wrong, Ernie. If you tell the righties to jab with the right foot and you tell the lefties to jab with the left foot, 99% of the time, they're not going to travel. But there are coaches, and I know who they are, because I've heard them, who teach you're going right, jab with this foot. If you're going left, jab with this foot. And his, those players get called for traveling so many times. This also gives me a way to push. I tell kids, your house is on fire and your pants are going to burn. So get your butt out of there as quickly as you can. So the first thing I do with kids, we don't shoot the ball. We have a drill where Tom just pokes and pokes, and all I do is just this. And I, I, I just make sure that I'm in triple threat position. And I tell my kids, I want you to be obnoxiously aggressive. How's that for, that sounds good, doesn't it? Obnoxiously aggressive. Because I don't want any more wimps with the ball. Oh, don't you close. Oh, somebody come and get the ball. You've seen it. You've seen them trap people and they get six o'clock and they make a sandwich out of them, right? Instead of getting down a triple threat. The ball never leaves the chest. Now I'm going to turn around. Thanks, Tom. You get down. Look. The ball never leaves the chest location. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where's my wrist? Now, that's my theory. You have a theory that's better? Fine. You know what the rule also I have? Every time the ball's in your hands, make sure your right wrist is cocked if you're a righty. You're a lefty, cock your left wrist. That's the rule we have. I've got a girl back in New Jersey who's a sophomore. She wanted to come down, but the NCAA doesn't allow it in demos, you know, because if college coaches here, this kid can shoot. She's got a jumper. Darry is unbelievable. Her daddy left home like seven years ago, so mom's stuck with five kids, so I've been helping her. This kid is awesome. I have a series of Jordan moves. I call it the Jordan one, and she'll jab, jab, bing, and that ball's in the basket. She hit eight threes in a state tournament game back in Jersey. She's only a sophomore. She's going to be a player. I'm going to tell you this. You may get mad at what I say. I think coaches make a big mistake letting kids scrimmage in preseason. And I'll quote the most successful coach I know in, at the high school level. That's Bob Hurley. The first week that those kids come to him, nobody scrimmages. Everything is basic skills. And I've, I've been begging college coaches in the preseason, the week before you get them, tell the kids don't scrimmage. They can run. They can do all their agility and strength drills and get to the weight room and do whatever. But work on ball handling and work on shooting. Now, I tell you shooting was simple. That's what I said. I said, shooting is simple. Can you count to three? OK. I want everybody in this room to stand up right now. I want everybody in this. You're going to be teachers, aren't you? You're coaches. OK. Now, watch. What is a stance? Your feet should not be wider than your shoulders. This is too wide. I can't go anywhere. Now, which foot should be ahead? I tell kids, put the left foot, just the toe of it, into the instep, like this, and slide it out. Bend your knees, stick your butt out. Now, the easiest way to teach the triple threat stance that I believe in is, 
Attention. Put the toe in the instep. Slide it out. Bend your knees. Now watch my elbows. Watch my elbows. They haven't left my body. They're still outside my body. I raise my elbows. I show everybody my shooting hand. My wrist is cocked. I bring it to my chest. This is what I call the shooting pocket. And I tell everybody, if you can count to three, I'm, you're going to count to three with me. All right, here, we've got the ball. Now we're going to lift the ball above the eye. One, two. Now this is what I see, coaches, around the world. One, two. Do I have legs under me now? No, I'm straight. So I tell people, if you want to get to the 2 o'clock position, the number 2 position, 1, 2, here's a great drill for you. Ball, please. Thank you. Edge of the chair. Get in your stance. 1, 2, now come out of the chair. 1, 2, now come out of the chair. So our rhythm drill. We're going to count to three, everybody. I'm going to go sideways so you can see. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I guarantee, I don't say maybe, I guarantee if you work with rhythm and stance with your kids, this is a true story. When I went out to a program where they were shooting 56% from the foul line as a team, I stayed a week. The rest of the season, that same team shot 76% from the free throw line. Now, I didn't have time in a week to overhaul everybody. So what did I do? Rhythm and stance. You know what I told the kids? If you give me rhythm and stance, I'll see you at the big dance. You know what the final line was? They won the whole tournament. OK? Have a seat. Thank you so much. Now, how do you get a shooting pocket? I'm going to give you a drill that will guarantee you a shooting pocket and a cocked wrist. Isn't that great? Toughest drill I know. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that. Look at that. Get in your stance. Look. Why do I do that? Two reasons. I've got my wrist cocked. And I don't want this space to change when I shoot a ball. I used to work with Kenny Anderson. And Kenny used to sling the ball when his legs weren't in the shot. And, he, and Eddie O'Bannon, the same way. And I'd say, one, two, now use your legs and your fingers. Legs and your fingers. And honest to goodness, some schools now, after they stretch, they do this drill without a ball. One, two, high. They even make believe they dribble. One dribble and pull up. Now let me show you what happens. OK, this guy can't hit the wall. He's the worst shooter in the world. Come on up here, Tom. It's not true. He is a good shooter. OK, face, face the wall like you're going to shoot. OK, get in your stance. OK, now this is what I do. He can be totally blind. And I guarantee you, if I put a ball in here like this, now don't shoot the ball, just raise your elbow and stay in your stance. OK, now see the ball hit him in the face, didn't it? So I'm going to take the ball out. He's in perfect shooting form. Now, if we're five feet from the basket, and I tell him, put it up there. I don't know if he can hit the wall here or not. Go ahead, try to hit the wall, Tom. OK? I do this. We don't shoot. OK, Tom, you get over there. I'll get over here. You shoot the ball to me. Ready? One, two, stroke it. OK, watch the chandelier. One, two, hi, mom. This is what my kids say. Hi, mom means high extension. I had a little girl named Gretchen Fishburne in Utah, Ogden, Utah last year. She won a foul shooting contest. She made 25 out of 25, and her lips were gone. I said, Gretchen, what are you saying? She's saying, one, two, hi, Mom. I have another girl at Santa Clara who was recruited as a point guard. They said, Ashley can't shoot, so they'll all lay off her. Well, she worked at Lavin Camp, who's the assistant at UCLA, and she's shooting the lights out. And one of the top girls in the country, Kristen, McKier Kristen is at Oregon. I keep thinking Oregon State. Kristen has a younger sister who's going to be good, too. She's one of the top three-point shooters in the country. 
Now, hey, who are the best shooters? Who are the best shooters in the professional ranks today? Throw a name at me, number, name. Come on, throw. Miller. Reggie Miller, okay. Anybody else? Who's a great shooter? Dale? Dale Curry. Dale Curry. Who else? Uh, Mitch Richmond. How about Mark Price? Did you know that he's the greatest foul shooter in the history of the NBA? He passed Rick Barry. He has the highest free throw percentage in the history. But now these guys physically are the strongest and the biggest in the, in the NBA, right? I didn't hear you. No, that's not true then. So strength does not go into shooting, does it? The biggest and strongest guys are not the best shooters. Right? I'd say the strongest guy in the NBA would probably Shaquille O'Neal, wouldn't you say? I wouldn't want to mess with him. So shooting then is rhythm and stance and balance. Uh, recently, I watched the NCAA girls golf tournament. They used our course in Wilmington, the Dye course, the Pete Dye course. And I went out and I stood at the 250 mark with my little granddaughter in a straw. I said, boy, we're safe out here. Pew. I said, are you kidding? That girl's 110 pounds, tops. They had a longest drive contest. The girl hit the ball 284 yards. I said, man, I know I'm stronger than that little girl. Yet she hits the ball a ton. I can't hit the ball 284 yards. So what is it? It's balance, it's stance, and it's rhythm. I just gave you a one, two, three count. Most kids, when they learn how to play basketball, have a two count. They go one, phew, let it fly, right? They even thumb the ball, they'll put it back here. That's why we have terrible form sometimes. I'd rather work with the natives in the islands. They've never seen a basketball. You have nothing to undo, no bad habits. That's why, coaches, the best time to correct a shot is in the summer. Take a week, no scrimmage. Tell your kids, no games, no three-on-three, -three, nothing but shooting and ball handling. And I'm going to give you some really good drills. Now, Tom just showed you a drill that guarantees the shot pocket. Put the ball behind the wrist, Tom. Now, get in your stance. Get down. Okay. Now, you see what this accomplishes? I'm going to just take the ball. When he lifts, he doesn't straighten his whole body out or he won't have legs. He keeps his butt out. I take this out. Now, he's looking at the basket right under that thumb. If you're a righty, your thumb goes right above your right eye. If you're a lefty, it goes right here. And people say, well, I want my guys to keep the elbows in. Hey, you're, look at my arms. They should brush against the shirt. Brush against the shirt. Wrist cocked. Okay, now Tom and I are going to show you the basic five drills. Come on up, Tom. The reason I'm using Tom, I, I did a clinic at his school, and they were shooting like 70% from the free throw line. When I got through, they were shooting about 30%, right? <laughs> Seriously, I tell kids, I don't make you better shooters. I don't, I'll give you the prescription. If you go to work, you'll be better. And I can say this without blinking and without patting myself on the back. The kids that I have in my program, ranging from elementary all the way to the NBA, have improved for one reason only, work. They work. If you're not going to work, you're not going to get better. And I can't make everybody Jerry West. You can't make everybody Jerry West or Oscar Robertson or any, you know, there's some gifted athletes in the world. But I'll tell you what, coaches, you can improve every kid in your program. And it bothers me when I run into top coaches, college coaches, NBA, they'll say, well, uh, Tom here is a great defender, tremendous rebounder. And it's his way of saying, man, this kid can't shoot a lick. <laughs> Honestly, well, I, I saw a practice one time. This is a true story. I, I won't mention names. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But you know at the end of practice how the guys shoot free throws? The coach rolls the ball to this kid, and everybody on the team knew this kid could not hit that wall if you're right against it. And, and you know what, the, here's, get ready to shoot your free throw, Tom. Here are, here are the other guys, they're all lined up ready to run their suicides. <laughs> I mean, this guy had no chance. If he were in a boat, he couldn't hit the water. But don't we have an obligation to, to help that kid? 
And like Willie May said to me, I used to play golf with Willie quite a bit. And Willie and I used to be the same age. I found out I'm a year older than he is now, last time I saw him in Vegas. But let me tell you, it's no fun failing. And Willie said he's against Little League. He says, some of those 12-year-old kids are like 6'2", and they're throwing a the ball, you can't even see it. He says, you send this little kid up there, and this kid's saying, please don't hit me, you know? What chance does that kid have? Why do we want kids to fail? So you put a kid in a game and you know he can't shoot, and he gets fouled and goes to the free throw line, and then you know some of the bricks and air balls. Is it fair to this kid? How many of us like to fail? Nobody. So why do we send our kids out to fail? It's the same thing. Okay, here are the drills. Show me your shooting hand, everybody. I want you to spread your fingers and make them hurt, almost shake, okay? Now see if you can relax and almost keep them in the same position. Are you relaxed now? Great. Okay, turn your palm up to the sky. That's great. Now please don't do this. Don't do it. Nice and flat, relax, okay? Put the ball in the well across the seam. Okay, this is the very, this drill is so important, it helps you in all aspects of shooting. Take this finger and put it here just enough to make it get on the pads of the five fingers. That, that's all I do. I don't care about whether this finger's here and that finger. Hey, kids in a game can't be worried about this finger and that finger. Spread your fingers and let them relax. Cock your wrist, okay, here we go. Here's the first drill that we do every single day. And all our drills, by the way, coaches, are in the paint. We don't get out of the paint. If you, if you look ugly in the paint, you ought to see what you look like at three. It gets worse, it doesn't get better. Believe me when I tell you, okay? We get in our stance, right? The ball's at the chest level. We lift the ball. This hand, you can do anything you want with it, except put it here. This is drill one. Now I use my legs and I extend into the target. And I stay around the basket. You can do this without a basket. You can do it against a wall. You can do it against the backboard. And my kids even do this, folks. Watch. One, two. Hi, Mom. One, two. And then when they really get good, when I think they have good ball control, one, two, and let it come right down on the back of your shooting hand, because I want you to hold your follow through. Let it come right back down on the back of your hand. I haven't gotten to a basket yet, have I? I'm doing this drill. And, and when well, you saw Tom do the two, this drill, you can do that sitting down reading. You can do that watching TV. I have parents call me all the time. I have a kid down at uh, Vanderbilt, going to be a real good player, 6'8 kid, Billy Despaltro. Mother called me and says, you know, Billy does this 100 times every night, every night. He, he said, the uh, hobby says you've got to keep that shot pocket. That's great. That's how you get better. You don't ever want this space to change. Okay, now we just did drill one. We get to a basket. Tom and I move around so we're not shooting baseline, front of the basket. We don't use the glass yet either. We don't bank them in. Drill two. Here we go. One, two, we add the devil. <laughs> you know who the devil is? This guy. We add the devil. Now, here's what a lot of players do. Tom, can I have the ball? Watch, Tom's gonna guard me. He's gonna knock my left hand off the ball when I tell him to. When I say add the devil, they go like this. Now, hit my left arm. I have no control. So what we do is this. One, two, now he hits, he can hit it all he wants. And some kids are so rigid into the left side you almost have to take a crane to move that left arm and show. It's almost like rigor mortis set in on that ball. They're crushing the ball with the left. Hey, folks, this hand is nothing. That's why we call it the devil. I see kids beating their man, going to the basket to lay it up, and instead of bringing the devil to the ball, they go like this and they go up and whoops, the guy strips them and they don't have the ball. Tell your kids, bring the devil to the ball. Don't bring the ball to the devil. That's so easy to remember. Bring the devil, the dead hand bring to the ball. The dead hand bring to the ball. When you shoot a layup, when you shoot a hook, we keep the elbow out naturally, okay? Now, those drills I have on sheets, I, I just spent about 150 bucks running off all kinds of papers and stuff, and 
they're in, in the car. <laughs> My granddaughter and daughter-in-law are romping around Myrtle Beach. Somebody. They'll be back at noon. And if you, do, if you do want them, pick up my card. My address is on the back. Forget the New Jersey address. On the back is the North Carolina address. And if you want me to send you stuff, fine. If you're interested in a one-day camp or a two-day camp or a three-day camp, Tom, I'm going to do one at his high school uh, and another high school. We're going to split a week. I'm going to go two and a half days at his high school and two and a half days at another high school. That way we can accommodate about 200 kids. And, and the cost won't be that great either. Not even for me, it's not that great. It's not a money maker, but uh, I, I try to help coaches as much as I can. I'm not doing it free, by the way, so don't, don't get, but seriously, everywhere I have been, everywhere I've been, I've been invited back. So it tells you that the kids have been very good and they've worked very hard. And it makes me feel good. It, it also makes me some enemies because the same people want me every year and I, I'm trying to get to other people. Not that I'm good, it's just that I enjoy what I do and I work hard at it. Now drill three, drill three. This is the one he's gonna do because I'm too old to do this. Here, I'm the basket right here. Come, come on over, Tom. This is the basket. He's gonna bank them in on this side and this side. He's gonna move his feet as fast as he can, but he's not going to shoot the ball off balance. He's going to work like this. His hands are always going to be above his, his, his eyes. He cannot drop his hands. And you can, have, you can stand under the basket and put your hands out here. If you touch the ball, the guy's out. Or if the ball hits the floor, he's out. So make believe you're shooting him off the backboard, Tom. Get in your stance. But he's got to get, that's it. Okay, you, that's good, Tom. You time him for 10 seconds. Glenn Robinson and Grant Hill were the best at this. They both did it uh, eight, eight layups in 10 seconds. I had a girl do seven and almost eight. Uh, Liz Hansen, who plays at Rutgers. She graduated this year. She played for Vivian Stringer at Rutgers. But that's drill three. And we, we do that inside the paint. Now the second part of drill three is from block to block. Tom would have to shoot the ball and run. And some of the kids are getting smarter and smarter. I have a really an arthritic thumb, so I gotta be careful. After they shoot the ball and it comes through, they might even tap the ball to the other side. They might even tap the ball to the other side. It, it's great, great drill. Some coach said to me, oh, you can't, that's walking, you can't do that in a game. I said, coach, you're working on stance, you're working on quick feet, and you're working on kids to keep the ball above. And you know something? This is the most basic shot in basketball, the most common shot in basketball, and we don't practice. Okay, drill four. So I call these the basic five. This is four. Here's the basket again. Tom's on this side. I'm on this side. I throw the ball out. I jump stop. And I pivot into the paint. And I shoot the ball. Now he's on this side. So he's going to jump stop and he's going to pull this. No, no, he's, he's going to pull into the, this leg. Pull. No, this right leg. Right leg, drop your right leg. Drop your right legs. In other words, this move on this side is ripping through. Is ripping through. You want to always face the basket. Now, I, I didn't do it this way always. But John Wooden told me you ought to do it that way. You know, and I just think the man knows what he's talking about. If he says do it that way, that's the way I'm going to do it. He said, on this side, turn in. Right foot, right? On this side, same pivot foot, open to the basket. Not bad, is it? Now, you can teach other pivot moves later to your big players. And, and we have other drills for the big man. Okay, now drill five. You get a partner. You start in close. And we say, hold still. What do you put on french fries? Catch up. Good. Okay, I want you to think of catch up. Get in your triple turn. And I never give him the ball unless he's begging. That's begging. If he has his arms down, I stand like this. Kids will say, come on, throw me the ball. Say, I'm not going to throw you the ball. You ready? Catch up. What did he do? Catch up. How many of you play baseball? Any of you? I used to play baseball. I thought I was pretty good, but I guess I wasn't. I didn't make the big leagues. But listen to me. Infielders. Practice taking the ball out of the glove. Catchers. Practice taking the ball out as quickly. Why? Why do, you want to, why do you want to do that? Get quick release. So I don't want you to shoot fast, but I want you to get ready fast. 
And I can't think of a better way for Tom to get ready, catch up. And he shoots the ball. If he makes it, he backs up. Okay? Catch up. If he drops his hands and I touch the ball, it's my turn. If he misses two in a row from the same spot, it's my turn. He does that that way, and he do goes on the baseline. It's this way and that way. But always inside 15 feet. Thanks, Tom. Now, those are the basic five. I call those my basic five shooting drills. Everywhere, everywhere I travel, I start my program with the basic five. You say to yourself, hey, what's so great about those? I have seen, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, I have seen shooting videos. They give you all kinds of shooting drills. I've yet to see the mechanics set up as simply as we've set them up. I did a camp with Magic Johnson in New York City a few years back. I took the train. He came in his limo with Converse. He was great. He did a great job. I'm just kidding. Super job. Kids didn't breathe a word. But I remember taking a kid that could not shoot the basketball. I used him in the demo. He shot five balls from about 10 feet. Only two. Two balls either hit iron or backward. The other three were air balls. That's not an exaggeration. He was 15 years old, could not shoot. And all I did was put him in front of the basket, put him in this mode, put the other ball here, raised it up, took this ball out and told him, go, hi, mom. And five minutes later, this kid was pew, and laughing wrote me the nicest letter. I get some of the nicest letters, and I answer every letter I get. I answer every letter I get from a kid. I never want to hurt a kid, ever. I did that too much when I was a young coach, and I was dumb. I've learned over the years, keep it simple, stupid. The KISS principle, it works, it really does. Gene Cady once said to, to the Pan American guys, he said, guys, you guys make the game complicated. What can you do? There's only three things you can do. You can go to the basket, you can go pick where you threw the ball, or you can pick away. What else can you do? Well, I thought about it. I said, what, what else can you do? I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell me. What, what else is there to do? Just looking for Kleenex, thank you. Excuse me. Does that make sense? Is it, did I miss something? I can go to the basket. I can go screen to the ball or screen away from the ball. Is, is there more to it? What else? Well, we can always shoot the ball. We can always dribble the ball. But you think about offensive basketball. Offensive basketball. If you're going to stand and do this all game, and you guys, if you want to ask me some questions, and I was so glad in Kansas City I was talking with uh, the Duke assistant, who's no longer in the uh, Pete Goodette. And I had just finished telling the coaches, if I were coaching today, and I've talked to Hubie Brown about this, and I've talked to Larry Brown about this, I would put the double stack offense in. You know why? Most coaches can't defend the stacks. I talked to Jim Herrick about it. I said, Jim, your guys get out in that flex, and they get overplayed on the wings, and you can't even get your offense going. You can't make the first pass. So you know what they're doing now? They're coming out of stacks and going into their offense. I can't tell you the number of places where we've put the double stack offense in. You know what the coaches tell me? The kids are making up basketball things. They do the pick and roll. They're doing things now that I couldn't believe possible. Two passes and we're getting layups. Then I heard Morgan Wooten last year. He's been running the double stacks for years. And nobody shuts him down. Of course, he gets good players. That helps. That always helps, doesn't it? OK, I gave you what I consider the basic five shooting drills. Now, once your kids have mastered the basic shooting drills, and that drill five, you can extend to the three-point arc, not the first day, not the second day, maybe the third day. 
The worst thing I ever did in Connecticut, I got so excited, the coach says, hey, we're really, we're doing a great job. I love what you're doing. Can we shoot threes? I said, sure. Huh. What a mistake I made. They went right back to this and thumbing the ball. This is thumbing the ball. If you have a kid who thumbs the ball and there's no help, and he's a good player, and you want to help, there's only one guy I know in the NBA who thumbs the ball, Reggie Miller. And that's why sometimes he goes off. If you watch his follow through, that left thumb gets in sometimes. But he's probably shot so many shots that he gets pretty good. There are people who have unorthodox shots who are very good. Jamali Wilkes had a funny shot. And, and, and uh, yeah, right. Well, but the point is they go in. If it's not broken, don't fix it. That's the bottom line. If the kid can shoot consistently every single time he plays, then, then you, you don't need to worry about it. But I, I, I had a father call me once and said, boy, my kid's a sophomore, and you know I'm talking about Tom because you were with me. Hey, he's a heck of a player. He's on all the AAU teams, and he starts on the varsity for his high school, and he's only a sophomore. Oh, man, and some nights he can really fill it. I swear to you, his outside shot, I'm going to shoot it to Tom. This is his outside shot. I'm going to shoot it to you, Tom. Watch me. On his right foot with two hands like that. Am I right or wrong? You saw the game. The guy went 0 for 4 and didn't shoot another ball the night I saw him play. His dad says, yeah, but you ought to see him knock him down in practice. I said, I've been watching basketball for a zillion years, and I've never seen anybody shoot the ball like that. Now, I said, there's no way he can have a jump shot, which he didn't have. I mean, how are you going to have a jump shot? There is no doubt in my mind you have to change that. I'll give you one other little tale. The coach at St. Patrick's High School in New Jersey, Kevin Boyle, has Shaheen Holloway, one of the best point guards in the country. He's trying to debate between California, St. John's, and somewhere else. Anyway, when Kevin was an eighth grader, eighth grade, he averaged 35 points a game. They said he was the coming of the next Larry Bird, right? Now, if I, I'm going to say something to you, and you'll say, Hobby, you're nuts. He couldn't shoot. Could not shoot. Averaged 35 points a game. It wasn't big. Could handle the ball. Scored 35 points a game in eighth grade. Freshman year, they brought him right to the varsity. Still couldn't shoot. I'll show you his shot. This is a true story. I'm a righty. That was his shot. So his dad said, what can you do? I said, complete overhaul. We got 35 points a game. We overhauled him. Shot 85% from the free throw line. Didn't score 35 a game, but he's a better shooter. Got a scholarship to Seton Hall. Transferred to St. Peter's and broke all of their records for assists. It was a good point guard. Why am I telling you this? Don't be confused with a kid who can score and a kid who can shoot. You decide, is this kid going to be able to play to his best ability at the next level? Does he have the potential? By the way, you know what potential means, don't you? You haven't done anything yet. Right. Very good, coach. He's one of my old Jersey buddies. He's a lot younger than I am, though. Seriously, you decide, but do this. Give every player a chance to be successful. OK? Now, here are the next seven drills. I call these the Jordan 7. The Jordan 7, the first part of the Jordan drill, to me, is the most important. And that's the jab step or the ball fake. And by the way, we don't ball fake like this. this is, I call this the George Zedek special. I said, George, you're going from your knees to the sky and by the time you get back down, the ball's gone. And he gets so upset, some little guy strips him. Play the game from your chest to your nut. Chest, nut. Chest, nut. Chest, nut. OK, we're in mixed company. Or I, I, I can't give you the punchline. But anyway, use your imagination. Chest, nut. Chest, nut. Catch up. Catch up. I used to get on the, on the floor. I'd, I'd lie flat on the floor. And I'd have some kid in camp get up Tom, make believe you're on the floor down there. Get on your knees, please. Tom knows what I'm going to do, OK? 
And I said, tell this kid, all right, come on out and shoot the ball. So he goes, and I'm on the floor, and I'm stripping him. And the camp is going crazy. The man's guarding you lying prone. And I stick my hand up, and I'm, he said, well, get your hand out of my way. I, I can't get the shot off. Well, am I right, Tom? Thanks, Tom. I mean, it's amazing. Catch up. Catch up. Chest nut. Chest nut. That's how the game is played. So Jordan won. Jab, jab. Don't shoot the ball. Just have them jump. Jab, jab. And don't do this. Cha -cha. I call it cha-cha Charlie. They go. <laughs> well, the defensive player's going to laugh after he steals your pants, your shoes, and the ball. Get the man off. off. Get him off. Put that nose out there. I got a big one. Push him back. Jab back, fake, head fake, ball. Our ball fake is six inches, that's all. Not up here and down, you'll never get it off. That's drill one. The first time, don't shoot it. The second time, let him shoot the ball. But by the way, don't put him out of three to shoot that. Can't do it. Put him in the paint and you gradually back him up. And, and the Jordan seven doesn't always happen at the top of the key. It can happen any place on the court. I had a kid, a high school kid from Utah, I got 41 in the game, and he calls me up. Mr. Hobby, my mother said, I got 41 points, and I, I did all seven Jordan moves in a game. He said, I didn't even realize it. Hey, if you do these moves enough, you coaches are going to see them. You'll say, oh, that's basic stuff. Next move, Jordan two, jab, jab, put the ball down, lay up. One dribble. One dribble from the three-point line, one dribble. Can it be done, Tom? And it can be done by girls, too. Please, don't say, hey, I've got girls, coach. I work with girls, too. And I, you know, guys get mad, but I'm going to tell you this. If God ever made the young ladies as big and as strong as the guys, they'd be better players. You know why? I never stopped a camp presentation in my whole life to tell, young lady, would you mind sitting up and pay attention? Miss, would you please look at me when I'm talking? Please, I want your attention, girls. How many camps I've been to? Hey, you want to sleep? Sleep at night. What's your problem? Get up. And you know, I know sometimes it's a reflection on the camp director. Some camps, they do a great job. They make the kids sit up. One of my favorite camps is the Lavin Camp in California. And I, I know you don't believe in it, but they really do a job with kids in discipline. The kids have to sit with their knees up, and they'll sit like this. And the coaches will come out and say, eyes! They want every eyes looking at them. So when they're in that stance, see, seated, coaches say, eyes! Eyes! And they'll say, okay, I want your ears. Stamp their feet. It's amazing. I want attitude. Everybody has a hand up, attitude, the big A. I said, Steve, well, you can't do that with college kids. And then I saw him do it with the Pan American team, with Grant Hill. Jimmy Jackson, Christian Leitner. And if you get Leitner to do anything but play the piano, you're in business. I mean, that's, hey, don't put that on the tape, please. I spent a week with the Pan Am team, and I don't think he said hello to me once in the whole week. Jimmy Jackson was up early and wanting to work with his shot, and uh, Tommy Gugliotta was up early. Grant Hill was up. I, I say every kid, the only kid I didn't work with was Christian Leitner, but I guess he's so good I don't need to work with him. And that's true, he probably doesn't. But at night, you could play the piano. Okay, Jordan two, nothing but a jab step, layup. Jordan three is a crossover. And the crossover is a big step. And I get a lot of coaches arguing this. This step has to go outside the defender. If Tom's guarding me, come up Tom. I've gotta to get this foot outside here. If I don't get it outside, I'm not going to go around. If I get it in here, we're both going to have awful knees, aren't we? And I have to get low, and I have to get this arm out, so when I cross, boom, and that ball comes out with a... Dr. Jack Ramsey demos this as well as anybody I've seen, and he's my age. Might even be a little bit older. Thanks, Tom. That's drill three. That's Jordan three, I call it. Jordan four is a pull-up jumper. One dribble. The power dribble, where you, where you get into stance. You know what I tell kids? Dribble into number one. 
What is number one? Coaches, what is number one? Stance. 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 Remember? One, two, three. One, two, three. One is stance. So every day we talk about dribbling into stance, whether it's right, left, straight ahead. That's stance. That's stance. That's stance. No stance, no chance. Okay? Now, Jordan 1 was no dribble, jab, fake, jump. Jordan 2 was right hand, right, one dribble, righty layup. Make sure the devil comes to the ball, not the ball to the devil. The other way, when you're shooting at lefty, this hand comes to the ball, so you protect. Okay? So I've given you five Jordans. One without a dribble. Two, righty layup, sorry. Three, crossover. Four, jumper going right. Five, jumper left. Okay, now what's six and seven? You remember Zeke, Isaiah? Did this better than anybody. Same thing as you, you just hit the guy with the, the Jordan. You just hit him with Jordan five, right? Now you have him set up for Jordan six. Jab, jab, fake. Stop, look, and leave. Stop, that's the stutter step, and then that second dribble layup. Great drill, great exercise. And then Jordan 7 is cross over and go left. Stutter step. The stutter step means stop, you hold your dribble, look, fake, and then go. It's done quickly though. But the three words that I use, stop, look, and leave. And you know where I got them from after I did this drill? A high school coach in California. Jerry Juro came up to me and he said, Coach, I got a great thing for your Jordan 7. I said, what is it? <coughs> he says, I tell my girls, stop, look, and leave. I said, I like it. So here I am using it. See, you know, we have an, a, a saying, uh, if you're going to be a teacher, he who dares to teach must never cease to learn. Think about it. You'd never stop learning. Honest. Here, you're looking at the the dumbest shooting coach in the whole world, right here. I went to every clinic. I acquired so much information. I did a lot. I, I used to bury guys with all this technical term, this finger here, and this eyebrow over here. And Hey, I, I'm better now. I almost died before I could prove it. I had a heart attack two days after Christmas, but I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Seriously. Keep it simple. The, the easier it is, the simpler it is for the kid. What do kids want? What do your players want? One word. Starts with an S. Success. What do you want? Success. You get a lot more with W's, don't you? I tell the kids, you know what W? w they say, win, win. I said, work, work. And I said, I went to a place where they're like 3 and 18, and they were the loosiest, goosiest guys I'd ever been around laughing. I said, laugh. Go ahead, laugh. I said, you can laugh. I said, but laugh begins with what letter? L. Lose begins with what letter? They got the relationship. I know we, we want to learn to laugh, but if you're going to laugh every time you lose, you're going to have stitches, you know, or whatever. I, I don't like to lose. Anybody here likes to lose? Come on. Every, they say you learn so much from losing. You know what I learned? I liked winning better. That's what I learned. Now, winning doesn't mean to grab a kid by the throat and curse at him or embarrass him or, or make fun of him. I, in all my years, and I, by the way, I was guilty of that. When I first started coaching, I was very sarcastic, abusive. I was terrible. I didn't even like myself. And the good news is I got out of coaching. If I had stayed in it, I'd probably have been dead or the referees would have banned me forever, honestly. I was not a good sport. And then I'd come home and I couldn't eat and I couldn't sleep because we lost. Hey, don't do it. It's not worth it. But I've never seen a young player on the floor deliberately miss a free throw, deliberately throw the ball away, deliberately travel, deliberately make a mistake. Who wants to look bad on the floor? Nobody. So what do coaches do? They scream and yell and holler, you stupid so-and-so. That's true. I see it all the time. I went to a game one time, it was a 20 point game at halftime. And one of the girls I'd work with said to me, my niece, 
six feet three. Six feet three, sophomore in high school. She's a backup center for two years. Couldn't play JV ball because she was too good for the JVs. Backup center. Center on the varsity was five feet seven. Five feet seven. She's six feet three. But anyway, the coach said, girls, you can't beat this team anyway. Go out and do whatever you want to do. I'm embarrassed. Is that great? Isn't that wonderful? Hey, the guy's a loser. I said to my niece, I said, Shona, how often do you practice? Well, we never practice on Friday and Saturday. Really? I said, what about the holidays, Christmas vacation? Well, he lives in another town, and he doesn't come back for Christmas vacation. I said, that's great. I said, well, how long are your practices? He said, well, we go about an hour and a half. I said, well, I went in and I did a free clinic for you, for your coach. I, I spent two days. The girls were, were, were so pathetic. They were like a bunch of toy poodles. You know how the toy poodle goes out on the leash? And this is the way they dribble up the floor. And the other team would come by and strip them, and they'd still be going like this. Honestly, it was the most pathetic thing I'd ever seen in my life. These are high school players. Get down. Get like a crab. Get big. Make yourself wide. And I did some, some work. I said to my niece, I said, does a coach do those drills, or do you work on them? No. What was your record this year? We won three. Did they three or four? Three. three. They won three games last year. And they got a six foot three girl sitting on the bench. I took her to a couple places in Wilmington. The coaches wanted her to transfer immediately. Come to my school. And you know, not because she's my niece, not because she's six foot three, but coaches. How many of you coach girls basketball? Raise your hand, please. How many of you have six three sophomores that can shoot the ball? that weigh 175 pounds, are strong around the board, can block shots and pitch it. Any of you have those? What do you do when you get one that big? You make her a player, right? You can't teach height. I mean, that's a God-given thing. Hey, you got a big kid? Use them. I remember my first year coaching the varsity. I was a freshman coach. We got 100 bucks to coach. That was good money then. But anyway, the coach gave me one, one order. He said, I don't care what you do, you don't cut any kid that's over six feet tall. I kept six kids between 6'1 and 6'5 as freshmen, and they couldn't walk and chew gum. I mean, they were, this kid came down from Canada, and he never saw basketball. He's a skater. But you know what? Two of them, two of them, senior year, got scholarship, and they won the state championship. Two out of the kids. So they all didn't make it, but the coach would not let me cut one of the big guys. N no question in my mind. If you've got a big kid, they're not going to be as coordinated. But you know what? If you work and you work and you work, Tom brought over a kid. I mean, Willie's what? Six, six five, sophomore. I'm built like a, like a Greek god, a beautiful body. Couldn't shoot, right, Tom? Tom and I spent some time with him, and now the kid has a nice setup. I'm not saying he's great, but from foul line in, he was pretty automatic, wasn't he? Now, what would happen if he spends an hour a day doing the basic five and the Jordan seven? And by the way, coaches, the Jordan seven, we start in one corner. I'll get a bunch of kids at each end of the court, and the, whatever the first kid does, the kids behind him in line have to do the same Jordan move. And they work their way all around the arc. Great drill. And you know what it teaches? Stance. No stance, no chance. I am thoroughly convinced. Now, what else can I do to make my players good? Well, some of my girls, some of my guys don't get in a weight room. OK. All right, Tom, I want you to do a push-up on the wall. Two ball push-up on the wall. I can't do it because I have arthritic thumb. Good excuse anyway, right? Sounds good. Now, we do push-ups on the wall, just like he's doing. And you see his hands shaking and arms shaking? Boy, I tell you, that's tough. Now, give me one ball, Tom. Do, do two hands on one ball and push up again. Keep it a little bit lower. That's it. Now, that, what does that do that makes Tom's hands and arms strong? OK? That's great, Tom. Good job. You're in shape. After Tom gets good at the wall, then we put the two basketballs on the floor with a spotter. And we do push-ups on two basketballs, having our chest touch the floor. We're trying to build up strength in the arms and hands. And then we do the two-ball drill, where we just 
pound, pound the ball, pound the ball just so we can get used to pushing it down with two hands. Then I have a drill called city block, city block, two words. The paint, the paint is the city block. And you have all the kids under the basket with two basketballs. You can use all the baskets you have as long as you have the key. And they go right up the, the foul lane. When they get to the corner, that city block, they have to do something else with the two balls, either one high, one low, or spin. And they go across the foul line to the other corner and then back to the basket. The minute the first player gets to that junction, the corner of the foul line, the next are going. So you're getting continual motion. Boy, the basket, right, Tom? The balls are going like crazy. And the kids are moving, and they can do it at both ends. Now, have them go the other way. Start on this side. Go left, turn right, turn right, and come home. OK? That's city block. I think you'll probably save your budget a few bucks. Oh, boy, I better not say this. You guys still work for that big ball? Uh-uh, come on. I say do everything with regular basketballs. You don't need any gimmicks. You take two basketballs and see me in the morning. That's what the doctor said. Take two basketballs and see me in the morning. You can do so much with two basketballs. Everywhere your kids go, instead of running suicides, make them take two basketballs. It's great for the coordination. Tremendous. Now, after they do city block, we do a drill called double cross. Double cross. We dribble the two basketballs to the middle of the paint. We make a right hand turn out about four or five feet just outside the paint, back to the middle, up toward the foul line, a little bit beyond, turn right back to the middle, and then we go out toward Tom here, turn around back to the middle, and then back to the basket. The tough part about this drill, the minute they get to the middle, right here, and make that right turn, the next person's coming with two basketballs. Uh, I've only had one collision in all the years we've done this. You, you don't want kids with their heads down. And which, which hand do you look at? Which ball am I looking at when I dribble a two? Neither one. I can't look at this one, and this one's going to get away. It's a great drill. I'm telling you right now, most of my kids, by the way, I don't do any scrimmaging at all. I work with young players. I work with them at night. I get a local high school. I'm going to work with Tom. He's offered me his gym. And I'm going to work like two or three days a week with his kids. In the fall, I'm going to be in Wilmington, and I'm going to hopefully help him. I want his team to be the best team in the world. I want them to be the best ball handlers and the best shooters in North Carolina. I don't know if that's possible. That's my goal. I hope he wants the same thing. I think he does. And I told him I never, never go to his, I haven't been to his practices unless he invites me. I will never go to your practice unless you invite me. I don't ever want you to think I'm that guy that knows it all and I'm standing behind your shoulder. I want to help you in any way I can. Oh my gosh. I'm not done yet, am I? Please. You're still talking. Thank you. Well, I've got to go for another day. OK, I, I'm sorry. I apologize for talking so much. I'm going against my own philosophy, and that's involving the people you work with. But seriously, the two ball drill is great. And when you get good, come on, Tom, let me embarrass you a little bit. When you get good, you give each guy a ball. Each guy dribbles, and he's dribbling, and I'm dribbling. No, not guarding each other. Get back. And then you give him a third ball, and you tell him, have a catch. That's a great drill. In other words, if he's dribbling with the right hand, stay there. Now, I'm going to throw him the ball so he can catch it lefty. No, don't bounce it. Just catch it and throw it back to me. That's how tough this drill is. Catch it. Try to catch it and throw it back. Catch it. That's it. Good. Well, I tell you, the first. The first, no, you can laugh, that's not easy to do. The first time I did this with my kids, this is a true story, I told the kids, try to just get it back a few times. My kids get so cocky, if you say you can't do it, they'll do it better. They'll be dribbling, and they'll throw the other one behind the back just to show me how easy the drill is. But you try it with three basketballs and have them moving and pass the other ball. You, you, at first, believe me, they won't do it. The, the other thing to do is get a person to dribble and throw it off the wall. Larry Bird used to do that. Dribble and throw the other ball off the wall. The more you do with two hands and two basketballs, this is what my kids tell me. They say, you know, coach, when I get one ball, it seems like it's easy. And doesn't it make sense? If you can handle two pretty well, and now you only have one to handle, 
wow, you're pretty good. Now, the last part of the two ball drill, we're partners. We go to midcourt. Everybody has two basketballs. We get in partnerships. I'm on defense, so I put my hands behind my neck, and I move, and I guard him while he's dribbling. And as we reach the top of the key, I open to the basket. He holds the dribbles, gives me the one ball, left hand. Keep your dribble going, though. I go in, lay it in, and then he stutters, and he goes in and lays it in. We do that all the way around the court, so we're not coming in right-handed always. We're coming middle. It's a great drill. It's a great drill. First of all, he's used to having someone right here in front of him, so he's got to put some moves. He can't run over me. And the other option to that is to just to put catchers at, at the foul line extended and have the person just dribble from midcourt as hard as they can and make a pass to the right and go in and shoot a lefty layup or make a pass to the left and go in and shoot a righty layup. Okay? Now those are what I consider the basic things I just gave you something for upper body strength. I also have something for lower body. And hold those, Tom. You notice the, the lines, the jumping as fast as you can in the quadrants. One, two, three, four, and back. And on one leg, on the other. You do them in 10 second intervals. You jump up and put your knees in your chest. Or you jump up and you kick yourself in the butt. Now, I have all those. I have all those listed here in my little booklet. Now, what I really, really try to get across to coaches, you can spend one day on upper body stuff, and then the next day spend the entire day on lower body stuff. So what I did, I put agility drills on the top and strength drills on the bottom. This isn't the Bible. I've worked with the New Jersey Nets. I've worked with the New York Knicks. The trainer who worked with me is now the trainer at the, or the strength coach at the Cleveland Cavaliers, Rich Delatry. And they send me materials continually. Uh, I remember when the late Drazen Petrovich was with us, he used to run and run and run and do drills, lift weights, and then come in and shoot the ball for hours. And that's why he became an all-star in the NBA. That guy couldn't jump over a line. He would trip over a line. But he worked. And some of the other players got a little jealous because he worked so hard, they were afraid they'd have to work as hard. Now this other little bit, I want to, before I just break, break it down into finals, this is a short course in human relations, and I'm guilty. I raised my hand. I'm guilty of not following this. The six most important words in, the, in our vocabulary, I admit I made a mistake. The five most important words, you did a good job. The four most important words, what is your opinion? The three most important words, if you please. The two most important words, thank you. The one most important word, we. The least important word, I. This is in my little booklet that I give to kids. And as I say, I, I've been guilty of doing it I also have a little excerpt from, I have John, uh, John Wooden's Pyramid of Success in here. And I have this little saying from Michael Jordan. You guys remember him, right? If you're under 18 years old, you've only lived about one-fourth of your life. That means you have the remaining three-fourths of your life to accomplish anything you want. Don't blow it. Don't do drugs. If you are doing it, stop. Get some help. If you haven't experimented with drugs, don't start. Give yourself a chance to succeed and be all the wonderful things you can be. And that's a quote from Michael Jordan. Now, I put together booklets like this when I do clinics. I also do, as I say, a whole series of camps. They're all sequential. I'm not trying to advertise, because believe me, I, I don't need work. Tom will tell you that. He comes to my house, and we get calls from everybody in the world. And one place I really didn't want to go, and I hope nobody's from there. Anybody from Mississippi? I've got to go to Mississippi in the middle of June, and I hear it's like 120 there, and it's not air conditioned. So I've got to go do a three day clinic in Mississippi, a town called Grenada or Granada. But when coaches ask me, I try to accommodate them as best I can. I don't always do it. Now, let me just finish. What time am I supposed to finish? Somebody tell me, because I haven't seen a program. What, what does it say on the program? 
Uh, noon to, oh, great, great. Um, uh, do you guys want to ask some questions before I get into the next? I'm sorry, please. Tom, you can say thank you. You have any questions for me? I get too excited about this. Yes, sir. Do you teach the one-two step? Uh, no, I don't. As a matter of fact, Patino's given up on the one-two step. You know why I don't teach the one-two step? Tom, come up and guard me. He's, you're talking about this, right, Coach? Is this what you're talking about? Yeah, right. What, what, what we're finding more and more, that if the kids are so quick defensively, when Tom sees me jumping into that, he, he's, he's into me. Did you notice now Patino does this? This is what I teach. This is what I teach. And guess what? I accomplish two things by this. I get my 10 toes into the floor. I get much more leg strength. That's number one. And number two, I prevent my upper body from torquing. I'll show you what I mean by torquing. I just got through working with a kid that, watch my upper body. The whole upper body wrote, and his shot was like this. And I tell kids, my theory is scientific. Boy, you know, I used to teach. I spent a lot of years teaching. I think that, that's an advantage. And you guys are teachers and gals. South and north. The law of reaction, where there's a force in one direction, there's a force in the opposite. So if I can push down hard enough, I'm going to get the laws of gravity to help me shoot the ball. But if I'm pushing this way, I'm going to be pushing against my upper body. I'm going to go east and west, and I'm not going to be as effective. Coaches tell me, my guy's shooting the ball flat. Well, he's an east-west shooter, and he's shooting with his, hand, with his hands. Get under the ball. Get under the ball. Get under the ball. Now push your toes in. And we teach guys also to do this. Any time a player has this foot back, put him in jail. Put one foot out here, one there. Now I'm dead. I, I, am absolutely, I can only reverse out of here, and I'm, I'm dead. That's why I think, I think Patino's gone back. I think he's stepping away from that one, two. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong. Thanks, Tom. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I don't teach it. That, that's another one. I'll be honest with you. I try to get my kids to jump stop when they're going right or left. And that's that way I avoid that right or Because I remember initially I used to teach this. They're good questions, Coach. I used to teach this. If I were going this way, I'd plant my inside foot, turn so I'd face the basket. But I find, well, I tell you, you watch these kids today. They all have that, that, that long, that dribble hop, that dribble. Boy, that's a fabulous move. Whew. It looks like travel, doesn't it? But that's what I, t is that what you're referring to? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm getting away. See, that, that tells you how old I am. I'm getting away from heel, toe, pivot into the basket. I, I, I don't do that. I try to tell my kids, jump into your stance. Dribble into your stance. And, and this may or may not help the question. Are there any other questions? Okay, free throws. Did you know this? And I've been asked this by radio, TV, Sports Illustrated. I think the February issue with Magic Johnson on the cover, Shooting the Brick by Alexander Wolf. I think he had my name in there a couple times. Big deal. But what he asked me, why are shooting percentages declining? It's very simple in my book. The three-point shot, go to the playground. Kids are all firing them up from three. How many times have you gone by a playground, pick up game, and watch kids shoot free throws? They don't stop to waste time. You take the ball out. We don't even shoot the free throws. I went to a playground the other day. The biggest kid was about 5'9", and he was throwing the ball up and trying to catch it and dunk it. And I, I don't want to be called a racist or anything, but he's a little white kid, about this big, and he had the hat on backwards, and he had the baggy pants, and he jumped about that high. He didn't even get the bottom of the net. Now, like I said, I'm not trying to put anybody down, but that kid could stay there for six years steady, and you could stay there and boost him, and he'd never touch the net. So why is he trying to dunk the ball? If you want to dunk the ball, then go work on some leg exercises, get your legs strong, and learn how to jump. And you know what I tell kids? 
I'll take a kid that came out of poverty, out of Jersey City, Bobby Hurley. Had a great career at Duke, didn't he? How many dunks did you see him make? Zero. How many dunks did you ever see Mark Price make? Zero. Now people say to me, well, Bobby Hurley never made it in the NBA. I said, whoa, whoa, time out. Got $16 million. You get 16 million for what you do? You get 16 million for what you do? Not hardly. So did he make it? I think he made it. Sure, he's not tearing up the NBA. Not too many guys jump out of college and tear up the NBA. You know, there's, there's only a few Michael Jordans in town. People say to me, you know, I want to be able to dunk the ball. Did you know for the last seven years, free throw shooting has declined from something like 69 point something down to 66 at the college level? Do you know that three point shooting has declined every year? Do you know that the two point shot has declined every year in the same time? Why? Well, now they have shot clocks in college and they're hurrying shots at the end. And if they get behind a bunch at the end of the game, what are they firing up? They're firing up threes. When the three came out, they're taking one every five shots, your team took a three. The latest stat said one every three and a half shots is a three. So that to me is why shooting stats have gone down. What you just saw us do, the basic five and the Jordan seven, putting that ball in behind your wrist, I guarantee your kids will shoot better if you work with them. I guarantee that. There's no question in my mind. And also, don't start with three-point shooting. That's the last thing in your program. And when you finally get the kids to back up, back up, back up, make sure you emphasize two of the most important ingredients. And that goes with what you just said to me, Coach. Ten toes driving into the floor, that coil. This is where you get all your juice. Shooting starts from ten toes, OK? And the second most important thing on a three-point shot is that high extension, that high mom. If you exaggerate this effort and you exaggerate the high mom, you're, you're gonna be there. I guarantee you're gonna be there. Now, when you shoot free throws, don't start on the free throw line. It kills me what I see. Start maybe at the broken circle and have them back up. Here's the ball. Referee gives me the ball. This kills me. I mean, why? I see all kinds. I see guys doing this, and I see go doing this. What, what does it do? This is what I teach. It might not be what you like. I find the middle of the foul line. If, I find, if I'm a righty, put my toe on it, get into my stance. The referee hands me the ball. If I want to bounce the ball, my eyes are focused on the front rim the middle hook front rim. That's what I'm looking at. Now, I know there are others who teach the back rim, and Patino teaches the center of the basket. I used to kid him. I'd say, Rick, what's in the center? Nothing. You're shooting at nothing. And I ran into a guy that wrote a book on don't ever use the backboard. If I see him, I'll, I'll choke him. I can't believe it. Hey, the backboard's the easiest shot in the world because you don't even look at the basket. You look at the, the box where you're going to put the ball. I tell kids, put your five fingers in the basket as if you're going to pull the net out. But study that front hook. Now, you want three dribbles? Feel the ball. Get to position number one. Two, hi, mom. Start in close and then back up, back up. Repetition. Now, you know my, my first drill I gave you this? I had a kid who just graduated from a, a Division I school in New Jersey, Monmouth College. He was a very good foul shooter. He made 43 in a row in high school, won a bunch of games. Referee used to get him the ball. This is what he did. Turn it over and just shoot it. No dribble, nothing. Unbelievable shooter, like 85%. No, I didn't tell him to do that. I had Anthony Mason stay with me at my home in North Carolina. 
Last year, he shot the ball from here. His thumb, his left thumb, never touched the ball. It was like a flick. He has big hands, and it was like a forefinger. This was the shot last year. And you saw him play, so I'm not lying. So one of the drills that we did was this drill. Of course, we did it lefty. So he said, I'm still getting the ball over here. So I said, put this thumb, watch me, folks. Put this thumb right in the center of your forehead, and that'll keep the ball on the left side. If you're a righty, put this thumb there. You see it? That keeps the ball from getting over here. It also keeps me from thumbing the ball. Practice doing this. So this is what we did. He shot 72. He's shooting 72% right now. Now, I didn't tell him to shoot one-handed. He said it's more comfortable. And when he comes back now, we're going to work on his jump shot. I want, to, I want him to have a face-up jumper. He's one of the top five shooters in the NBA, statistic-wise, but most of his stuff comes from the paint in. And I don't take credit for it, because he works hard. He works very hard. But any time you want to break the thumbing habit, you don't need to go buy that glove that somebody sells. There's, there's, there are all kinds of gimmicks in basketball. You don't need them. Get a basketball. By the way, how many of you use the medicine ball with your kids? They're, they're expensive, aren't they? You know what I tell coaches? Get a ball that won't hold the air. Just cut a hole in it and stuff it with old towels or sand. Sand leaks, so that's why we do towels. And then get a, a bicycle patch and put it over it, and you got your own medicine ball. You can make it any weight you want. And do all my drills, the shooting drills, with the medicine ball for, to build up the strength. The ball is the same size. And if you want to mess around with gimmicks, make the basket smaller. I don't like shooting a bigger ball at the same basket. I like shooting this ball at a smaller basket. It makes me concentrate more. That's my theory. There's no question in my mind, I want this to be a feel. This is an extension of you. This ball is part of me. And you know what I tell kids? This ball never got anybody in trouble. You can take this ball to bed. You won't get any disease from it. You can take this ball. You can take this ball in your backyard and play with it all you want, and it'll never kick you or hurt you. <clears throat> Think about it. This basketball can be your best friend. And back home, we call this ball swish. All my kids refer to the ball as swish. And when we get through talking, we say, we, best swishes to you guys. Best, I sign my name now. Best swishes, Ernie Hobby to Shot Doctor. That's the way I, that's my patent now. Best swishes. I got that from kids. They call the ball swish. They call the ball swish. What's wrong with that? And the last thing I'm going to do before I let you guys get out, I'm a great dribbler. I am the best dribbler in the world. I can handle a ball. Can't shoot a lick. How are you going to guard me, Tom? I can't shoot a lick. I can't shoot. I can't shoot a lick. Sure, he's going to play way back there, right? Hear me. Can't shoot, great ball handler. He's getting off me. Now, I'm the best shooter in the world. I am the best shooter in the world. Yeah, but I can't handle. So what do I do now? OK? Now, the last thing I do with my guys, I do this. I get on one side of the foul line. Come on, Tom, over here. He knows what I'm going to do. I'll say, Tom, and I'm 66 years old, and I had a heart attack. And I take his, who's the fastest guy on your team? He gives me the fastest guy. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to race you from here to there. You know, get yourself ready. And boom, I'm over there. And he's still standing. And he'll say, Coach, you didn't say go. You forgot to say go. And what did I say to the kid? When you're in a game and you're, somebody's guarding you, who gets to say go? Who gets to say go? The guy with the ball. It's not a race. And I don't have to beat. Tom, get over here. I don't have to beat Tom from here to there. I only have to beat him what? One step. I get by him here, he's mine. Hey, the best example, Larry Bird. 